안녕하십니까? 온라인 서절의 김경원입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim Gyeongwon of Online Surgery. I'm honored to meet with you today. The patient of the day is 47-year-old male patient, as you can see here in number 17, 26, and 27, you can see significant amount of alveolar bone destruction. The chief complaint was that there was mobility and pain in number 17 and 27. The patient complained of swelling and discomfort. The patient thought that the right side, or number 17, was worse and wanted that to be treated first. If you look at patient's medical history, the patient had gout, but it was under control and the patient was taking medication. This was not going to be a direct problem in doing implant surgery. Extraction was done in number 17 first. If you look at intraoral standard, there is significant alveolar bone destruction. Socket preservation was performed at the time a OSC particle bone and OSC guide collagen membrane were used for socket preservation. I'm going to show you implant being placed using one guide. In number 26 and 27, the conditions are unfavorable as well. This is actually not addressed in this video, but AOS collagen was used for socket preservation. Later, I will address at a different video clip about this part as well. This is number 17 on CT. If you look at the root side of the tooth, there is severe alveolar bone destruction. Fortunately, despite significant bone destruction on the palatal side and buccal side, there were a bit of wall left. Extraction was performed along with a thorough curatage. Socket preservation using AOS particle bone was performed. Number 17 was extracted. Granulation tissue was thoroughly removed. AOS bone, which is a bovine bone, was used for grafting. OS guide. The collagen membrane were used. Socket preservation was done as shown. After extraction on the apical side, you can see significant amount of granulation tissue. Socket preservation was done after one week. Panoramic x-ray was taken. This is about 2.5 months later. And after four months, a comb beam CT was taken. As a result, in the area where socket preservation was done, AOS bone has matured and healed, and up to the inferior margin of the sinus, there's about 8 millimeters. Without grafting sinus, 8.5 millimeter implant was assumed to be possible. One guide team was consulted, and after looking at surgical report, you could tell that the apex side of the implant was going to be in contact with the inferior margin of the sinus. 8.5 millimeter implant was to be placed without bone graft. Implant was placed as shown. This is immediate post-op image. Socket preservation was done about five months prior and surgery was performed. The 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed. ISQ value was about 65 and 64. Healing abutment was connected and surgery was completed. This is number 17, immediate post-op image. Socket preservation was done previously, so additional bone graft was not necessary, and surgery was completed in this way. ER type prosthesis was delivered. It's been about seven months since socket preservation at this point, and a final prosthesis was delivered, and the patient did not experience major issues. This is about 9.5 months later. On the other side, you can see that the existing tooth has been removed. The socket preservation here was done using AOS collagen, and at a future date, I hope to show you a surgical video on this side as well. At initial visit in number 17, there was severe bone destruction, and AOS was used for socket preservation. After that, implant was placed. Let's look at the surgical clip.
One guide will be used here, so template is adapted. Wide hole tissue punch is used, and gingiva is being removed here. It's not really visible, but it was removed as shown. Thorough removal of gingiva is done and confirmed. Initial drill is used, and drilling is performed here. Initial drilling is done. Full length drilling is done. If initial drill does not go in fully, flattening drill may have been necessary, but because this is an area where sucker preservation was done, it was not a problem. 3.5 by 8.5 one guide drill is used. 3.5 by 8.5 millimeter one guide drill. The bone quality is not really hard. 4.5 by 8.5 one guide drill is used for preparation. This is an area where sucker preservation was done, so 4.5 by 8.5 drilling is done and implant is placed. The KS3 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant is irrigated and then implant is placed. The surgery itself is quite simple. Using one guide in number 17, implant is placed. With engine, it is placed about 80%. You can see that there is a fairly nice stability. Implant driver is used to get the final position. Torque wrench is used. The initial torque is not really good. Because this is an area where bone graft was done, it's about less than 20 newtons. It's about 16 newtons. You can see that it is in line with the yellow marking, and then removal is done. For ISQ measurement, a smart peg is connected. ISQ values are 64 and 65, so primary stability is not excellent. Healing abutment is connected. A shallow healing abutment is connected and surgery is completed. The surgery itself was not a problem because one guide was used in extraction socket. There was severe alveolar bone defect. However, there was still residual buccal wall, so using that in AS particle bone, second preservation was done before implant placement. Thank you for watching.